Hi, it's Kim. Today we're going to work on balancing chemical equations. We're going to do this using two different methods. We're going to use a math method and a drawing method. The learning goals for this video are to count the number of atoms of each element in a chemical formula, to determine whether or not a chemical equation is balanced, and to balance a chemical equation using multiple strategies. So in this case, a math method and a drawing method. Problems. So I would like you to try and go through and do as many of these practice problems as possible here. So there's six chemical formulas. I've broken down which elements are in each formula. And you are going to see if you can figure out, and then we'll go over the answers, how many atoms of each element there are if we keep an eye on the fact that some of them have coefficients and some of them do not. So pause this video and take a moment to try on a piece of paper to write down what the answers would be. Make sure you've tried all these problems yourself. We'll go over the first one here, calcium chloride, CaCl2. Notice there is no coefficient or number in front, so we can assume that the number one would be there. I would draw calcium chloride like this one calcium ion with two chloride ions bonded to it. I am using the subscripts or the little numbers to tell me that. And so in CaCl2, it's kind of like saying that there is one coefficient, Ca1Cl2. In the second problem, I have two CaCl2. I have essentially just doubled the number of overall particles. I have two particles of Ca bonded to two Cl's. So I'm going to multiply that coefficient by that subscript. So two times one is two, two times two is four. Notice I could also draw the particles to figure out how I'm going to determine the number of atoms of each element. Number three, LiPO4. There's three different elements here. Notice that there is no subscript next to the P, but the P is a capital letter and so is the O. So those are two different elements. I have three lithiums because there's an invisible coefficient of one and one times three is, th is three. One times one is one, one times four is four. So three lithiums, one phosphorus, four oxygens. For number three, 3Li3PO4, 3 lithium phosphate. Again, I can say that I am essentially taking the particle with three lithiums, four oxygens, and one phosphate, and I am multiplying it by three, or I'm drawing it three times. So I end up with nine lithiums, three phosphoruses, and 12 oxygens. You can also think of this as just multiplying each of the coefficients by three, or multiplying the count that we had and we counted just one lithium phosphate by three. Let's do some challenge problems here that involve counting with parentheses. Aluminum sulfate, Al2SO4-3. Notice that three that I've highlighted there that's outside the parentheses. So that three tells me that I have a polyatomic ion here. Sulfate is one of my polyatomic ions that I can find on my reference table. Every sulfate ion has one sulfur and four oxygens. So if I have one particle of Al2SO43, I would have two aluminums, and then this is where I need to be doing some work here. Remember how I distribute, if I have in math, three times x plus one, I would distribute the three. The parentheses work the same way in chemistry. I'm going to distribute the three to the subscripts inside the parentheses. Not aluminum, but sulfur and oxygen. So I'm going to end up with three sulfurs and 12 oxygens. Could have also figured this out by drawing, right? It just takes longer with this many atoms in the formula, formula unit. So three times four for oxygen, three times one for sulfur, and one times two for aluminum. Now this last question is just throwing another variable in here because we're using the same formula that we had in number five, but now we have a coefficient of two. So I have to multiply everything that I had when I counted just one of the particle by two. So I can say, okay, the coefficient times the subscript, two times two for aluminum. The, but when I've got the parentheses in the polyatomic ion, I need to multiply the coefficient times the subscript outside of the parentheses times the subscript inside the parentheses. So two times three times four for oxygen, that gives me 24. 
2 times 3 times 1 for sulfur, which gives me 6. 1 through 4 were much simpler than 5 and 6 here. 5 and 6 are a little bit more challenge problems because they include those parentheses, but it is worth making sure that you are comfortable with how I just counted those atoms. So we've done a quick review of counting the number of atoms of each element in a given chemical formula, paying attention to both the coefficients and the subscripts. Now let's look and see what makes a chemical equation a skeletal or unbalanced equation versus a balanced chemical equation. So if I make one of each of these reactants and products, this is a skeletal or an unbalanced chemical reaction. Notice there are two nitrogens, on the left-hand side of the equation, but only one on the right-hand side. A balanced chemical equation has the same number of atoms of each element on either side of the reaction arrow. We can adjust our number of atoms of each element by adjusting coefficients, or the big numbers at the front of the chemical formula. Notice we can never change the subscripts or the small numbers that are down next to the chemical formula when we are balancing chemical equations. Here's another example. Water is decomposing, and so I need another oxygen on the reactant side, which means now I need more hydrogens, and now I have two orange oxygens and four white hydrogens on either side of the reaction arrow. I strongly suggest you look up this simulation or game yourself. You'll see there's also a game you can play to challenge yourself. Just type FET, P-H-E-T, balancing chemical equations into Google, and you'll find it yourself. Let's go on and look at two examples for how you could solve a balancing chemical equations problem without the simulation to help you. So here's our first equation. Using the math method, we're going to show how chlorine gas reacts with sodium bromide to form sodium chloride and bromine gas. So using math, the first thing I want to do is count my atoms. So I have two chlorines, one sodium, and one bromine on my reactant side. I have one chlorine, one sodium, and two bromines on my product side. Notice that I have my elements lined up so that they're in the same row as each other from reactants to products. I'm going to start by balancing chlorine, Cl. So on the product side, 1 times 2 gives me 2. Now if I want to multiply chlorine on the product side by 2, I need to put a 2 as the coefficient in front of NaCl. So I'm also changing sodium, Na, when I change chlorine on the product side. Now I need to balance sodium, because chlorine is balanced. I've got two and two. So on the reactant side, I can make one equal two by multiplying it by two. Again, I need to put the two as the coefficient in front of the formula with sodium, which means I'm also going to be changing the number of bromines that are in the formula. Turns out that actually balances the equation for me. So any place where I did not put coefficients, I'm going to put a one. So now I have my balanced equation. I could do this the exact same way and get the same answer using the drawing method. Now I'm going to have a blue dot BCL, to BCL right, chlorine. So I'm going to draw two blue dots touching to be one Cl2 particle. A red dot is going to be sodium and a green dot is going to be bromine, just to keep track of my colors. So I'm going to draw sodium and bromine NaBr touching. Notice there's just one of each, Na1, Br1. On the product side, Using my same color combination, Br2 is going to be two green particles touching. Now, if you don't have color, you can also just draw a circle and write Br inside of the circle. NaCl is going to be red for sodium. Again, you could just draw a circle and write Na inside of it. And then blue is going to be chlorine, so NaCl. Now, with the drawing method, I want to look and notice where my particles are, do my count the same way I do in the math method, but now I'm going to start with Cl, and I'm going to say I have two Cl's on the reactant side and only one on the product side. Same problem with Br. But instead of thinking about it with multiplication, I'm just going to draw, right? So if there are two Cl's on the reactant side, I need another Cl on the product side. I'm going to draw a blue dot because that's my Cl. But the thing is, I can't draw it without also drawing a sodium, without also drawing it touching a red dot. So I'm going to recount. I drew another NaCl particle, so now I have two Cl's, but I also now have two Na's because I can't draw a Cl without the Na attached. I can't break the rules of the chemical formula. So now on my reactant side, Cl is balanced, 
but on my reactant side, notice now I have two sodiums on the product side and only one sodium on the reactant side. So by balancing chlorine, I kind of unbalanced sodium, but that's okay. So on the reactant side, I need to draw another sodium atom. So it's a red circle. But again, I can't just draw a red circle. I have to keep follow the rules of the particles, right? NABR is a red circle and a green circle. So I've changed the number of BRs as well. Turns out that actually worked pretty well. Now I have two NAs on both sides of the equation and two BRs on both sides. So I'm balanced. My final step here is to count how many particles of each chemical formula I have drawn. Because that's how I need to get my coefficients done, right? If I don't fill in the coefficients, I haven't actually solved the problem. So I have one, two NaCLs. So there's going to be a two there. I have one Br2 particle. Yes, there's two Brs, but there's just one particle of Br2. I have two NaBrs. I have one Cl2. So I end up with the same answer that I got using the math method. Both of these methods can be useful. You can decide based on the problem which method you want to use. The math method can be quicker for some people, and it's definitely better for reactions with large molecules, and it can be easier to show your work online. You don't need to take a picture of your work and upload it. The only downside of using the math method is that it isn't as visual, right? You can be absolutely sure that you're correct if you're drawing out all of the atoms. Every year I have students that use the drawing method even for more complicated problems. And then I also have people that sometimes will switch back and forth depending on the problem. So it's your call. You'll definitely have the opportunity to see more videos where I go over solving balancing chemical equation problems with both the math method and the drawing method. This won't be the only time that you see me do this, but take a moment to check back in on your learning goals and reflect on how comfortable you feel with what we did in this video today. Awesome job.